Hello everyone, welcome to the second video in the series wherein the mission is to mint our NFT using ERC721 token standard on the Polygon test network. So in the last video, we did the basic installations and also set up our project folder. So if you haven't watched that video, then I would highly recommend you to first go and watch that video because we are going to use everything that we installed in the previous one. So today in this video, we are going to write our smart contract using ERC721 token standard. But before that, we'll also discuss the difference between the ERC721 and ERC1155 token standards and what is Open Zeppelin. Then ultimately, we'll move on to writing our smart contract. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now, before actually jumping into writing our smart contract, let's first understand briefly about what is this ERC721 NFT token standard. So, majorly there are two token standards that are used to mint the NFTs. One is ERC721 and the other is ERC1155. So, in this series, we are going to use ERC721 NFT token standard. So, as you can see here, it's written that this type of token is unique and can have different value than another token from the same smart contract. This means that if with this smart contract, you are trying to mint different NFTs. So each NFT will have a unique token ID associated to it and you can uniquely identify the NFTs. If you try to mint uh, your NFT using uh, this token standard, right? So this is majorly about this. Now here you can see there are different methods that we need to implement if we want to use this token standard. Now the next question that should be uh, coming to your mind right now is are we going to write all these methods from scratch in our smart contract? Uh, so you need not worry because the answer to that question is no. We'll be using the pre-existing codes from Open Zeppelin. So Open Zeppelin is basically a library for secure smart contract development and it has all these methods pre-implemented. So we need not write everything from scratch. We will import all of these things into our smart contract that we are going to write and we'll modify it as per our requirement. It's as simple as that. So uh, since we'll be inheriting classes from this Open Zeppelin contract library, so we need to uh, install first this in our project folder. So now in order to install this library, we just have to run a command and that is npm install open zeppelin slash contracts and once i run this and it is installed you will be able to see this uh, in our node modules okay so it is installed let's see whether we are able to find uh, this open zeppelin in our node modules open zeppelin folder yes and we are, here we have all the folders for token utils etc etc so we are good with it. Okay, so now let's jump on to writing our smart contract. So I've already created a mint contract.sol file in my contracts folder. .sol is basically an extension which will tell uh, that this file is written in Solidity programming language. So before writing the smart contract, let's first understand what we are trying to achieve from it. In that way, it will be a bit easier for you to understand. So we expect that uh, this smart contract should have a function wherein we will be passing one URL of our artwork and in uh, return, it should mint the NFT to someone's account. It could be my account, it could be anyone else's account and only the owner is able to execute this function. And in return, it should give me the unique token ID that it has generated. Additionally, what we want is for each of the token ID, uh, that gets generated, it should be associated to a particular URL so that I know that for say token ID 1, this was the URL, for token ID 2, this was the URL and so on and so forth. So that's what we are majorly trying to achieve. Okay, now let's move on to writing our smart contract. So the first line that we need to write in any of the smart contract is the Pregma Solidity line. So what this Pregma Solidity line does is, it's a pre-compiler statement that locks in your Solidity compiler version. So here I want that the Solidity compiler version should be between uh, 0.4.16 and should be strictly less than 0.9.0. Uh, why we want to write this is basically because if in future there is some update, our code should not break. Now I'm going to write some of the import uh, lines here because I want to import some of the functionality that are pre-existing in the Open Zeppelin. Uh, library that we had imported. So let me just write it and then we'll explain you what it all does.
let me quickly explain you what all I have imported. The first thing that I've imported is the implementation of ERC-721 token standard. The next thing that I've imported is basically a library that provides a counters, uh, counter that can be incremented or decremented by one. The next thing I want is uh, in my smart contract, only the owner should have the authority to mint the NFT. So that's why I'm importing this functionality from this ownable smart contract. And last but not the least is the mapping that I want to create between the token ID and the URL that I'm going to pass. For that, I will be using the set token URI uh, function from this ERC721 URL storage uh, smart contract. So now let's move on to writing our smart contract. So I will write contract. You can name it anything. I will name it mint contract and I want it to inherit uh, the properties, the methods and the storage variable from these two smart contracts. So that's why I'm writing this. Now I want to create a private variable called token ID, which will be storing the number of uh, NFTs that we have minted so that for the next uh, NFT that we are trying to mint from the smart contract, it should assign a new token ID to it. So for that, uh, from this library counters, like I'll be creating a token ID. For that, I need to copy this from here. Okay. And then I'll be creating an instance or new variable for me. And uh, I'll make it private and I will call it say token ID. All right. Now I'm writing a constructor that I'm using from the ERC721 token standard and in it I need to pass two variables one is the name of my NFT you can call it anything and the next is the symbol so I'll call it say NFT okay now the final thing that we need to write in the smart contract is the mint NFT function so I will call it mint NFT and as I've told you that we need to pass the URL of our uh, artwork so here I will call it say token URL cool. and I want to make it public and I only want the owner to have this power. Now this token ID that I've created this variable is not initialized and in Solidity if you don't initialize a variable it takes in the value 0. So then when I'm minting this NFT it should increment the value of this token ID by 1. So I will increment it and this increment function I am taking from this counters.solidity file. Here this incrementing is increasing the value of it by 1. Okay. Now I need to create another variable which will store the current uh, token ID of any of the URL that we are going to pass. Right. So I will name it. You can name it anything. Let's create. Let's call it new ID. And that will take the value of this current value of this token ID. All right. Now we need to write the mint NFT function. We are taking from this ERC721 smart contract. So there is this mint NF, uh, mint function which takes in two parameters. One is the two, uh, which is the address, and second is an integer, which is the token ID. So what it does is it mints the token ID and transfer it to the two argument that we pass to it. So here, let's write this function and I want myself to receive this uh, NFT. So I will write message.sender. So the next thing that we want is to store the mapping of the URL and the token ID that we have generated. For that, we'll be using the function from ERC721 a URI storage that's called set token URI, which takes in a token ID and a token URI. And like in the uh, mapping, it stores that for this particular token ID, this is the token URI. Cool. So I'll copy this function, which I'm going to use here. And I will pass in my new ID and the token URI. And in return, it should give me the new token ID that it generated. So we are finally done with our smart contract and that's all for this video. In the next video, we are going to deploy the smart contract onto our personal blockchain first, that is Ganache, and we'll also write some tests to see if everything is working fine or not. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next one.